Hi everyone, my name is Parul. Welcome to my channel Parul English Lab. In this lesson, we are going to look at what is a conjunction and the three main types of conjunctions. So, let's start our today's lesson. What is a conjunction? A conjunction is a word that connects parts of sentences. It can connect words, phrases, or clauses. For example, my brother brought a pup and a kitten home with him. So here the conjunction is and. This is the conjunction and in this sentence it is connecting two words. A pup and a kitten. Two words. Now let's look at the second sentence. I want to watch the match but I have to go to work. So here the conjunction is but and it is connecting two clauses. Clauses means sentences, two clauses. So this is the first clause and this is the second clause. So but is connecting two clauses. And in the third sentence, my keys are either in my bag or in the car. So here either or is a conjunction and it's connecting two phrases. In my bag, first phrase and in the car, this is the second phrase. Okay, so this way a conjunction is a word that connects two words or two clauses or two phrases in a sentence. Now to understand this in detail, first we need to understand what is a phrase and a clause. What is a phrase? A phrase is a group of words which act together as a grammatical unit. For example, after the meal, the helpful people. So these are group of words and none of these examples contains a verb or a subject. So this is merely a group of words. So more than one word is a phrase that doesn't have a subject doing an action. When a group of words contains a subject with a verb, then it becomes a clause. For example, I ate banana. So here we have a subject doing an action. Okay, I ate bananas. He is writing a letter. So he is the subject and the verb is writing. So here we can see a relationship between a subject and the verb. So this is called a clause. A normal sentence is called a clause because that has a subject and a verb that shows a relationship between the subject and the verb. And a phrase is merely a group of words that doesn't have a subject and a verb. Now there are two types of clauses. Independent clause and dependent clause. I'm not getting too much into dependent and independent clause right now because that is not required. We are here to learn conjunctions so let's concentrate on that but still just to give you a little idea about that. So uh, independent clauses are the clauses that express a complete thought. It's a complete sentence by itself and dependent clause is a clause that doesn't express complete thought but it adds some extra information to the sentence. For example, I liked the book you gave me on my birthday. So I liked the book. This is a complete sentence. This expresses a complete thought. Okay, so this is an independent clause. That you gave me on my birthday. That you gave me on my birthday. So it doesn't look like a complete sentence. So this is a dependent clause. But at the same time, it is adding some extra information to the sentence. So this is the difference between dependent and independent clause. Now let's see the three main types of conjunctions. There are three types of conjunctions. Coordinating, subordinating and correlative. Don't get confused by all these names because names are really not important. But you should know where and how to use these conjunctions correctly. In English language, there are many conjunctions. It's a huge topic and it's impossible to cover all these conjunctions in just one video. 
but they are very important because they actually take you to advanced level and they really enhance your language so that's why today i'm introducing the conjunction series and this video is going to be the first video of conjunction series in this video i'm going to discuss coordinating conjunctions there are seven types of coordinating conjunctions and to remember them you just have to learn one word that is fan boys fan boys for and nor but or yet so so now let's go through them one by one to see how to use them first is for now for can be used as a preposition as well as a conjunction when we use it as a preposition then the meaning is different uh, for example um, we use it to talk about the purpose of something for example i'm going for the breakfast and we use it for people also i've got these flowers for you i was waiting for someone we use it for time or duration i have been waiting for you for five hours so this way we use it as a preposition but when we use for as a conjunction the meaning is completely different the meaning is because of please don't waste water why for it's precious because it's precious okay so this means because of something i'm not going to office for i'm not well why you're not going to office because i'm not well for i'm not well so because can be replaced by for so here when it is used as a conjunction the meaning of for and because is same but when you use it as a preposition then it has a different meaning now next is and so and connects two words we all know that she is smart and beautiful i want to have bread and butter so this way we use and next is nor nor is used to connect to negative ideas in a sentence for example she couldn't speak nor could she understand what i said so not this not this two negative ideas i don't like coffee nor tea i don't like watching movies nor serials i don't like him nor does he so here when you have two nouns then it's easy to frame a sentence i don't like this nor this but when there is a verb like this she couldn't speak then you will use the same verb nor could she and verb will come first and then the subject nor could she understand what i said uh, she couldn't speak english nor could she speak german i don't like him nor does he so same verb do but here don't and here does because with he she it we use does not do okay so the verb is same so that's how you are going to frame a sentence using nor next is but but is used to show the contrast in a sentence he is poor but honest so it's not that he is poor so he will not be honest he is poor but honest so it's showing a contrast she is quite young but very mature so generally people think that young people are not mature enough but here she is quite young but very mature so again it is showing a contrast next is or so it shows that there is only one possibility this or this um i would like to have tea or coffee not both or or means there is only one possibility tea or coffee next is yet again yet shows the contrast I don't like cricket yet I support my son whenever he has a match so it's not that I don't like cricket so I will not support my son I'll not go and watch his match no I don't like cricket yet I always support my son or I always uh, go and watch his match so this is a contrast here you can use but also because but and yet they both show a contrast in a sentence i don't like cricket but i always support my son whenever he has a match that's also correct it's sunny yet the wind is 
quite cold or it's sunny but the wind is very cold last one is so so means for that reason therefore there were not enough beds for that reason I had to sleep on the floor or so I had to sleep on the floor or therefore I had to sleep on the floor there is a holiday tomorrow and the office will be closed so I have to finish all my work today for that reason I have to finish all my work today so this is what it means uh, I hope it's clear to you now and it's easy to remember all these seven coordinating conjunctions you just have to remember one word that is fan boys now you try to make some sentences on your own using these conjunctions and keep watching my videos don't forget to subscribe to my channel keep learning take care bye bye thank you for watching my videos if you find them helpful please like and share with your friends feel free to leave comments do subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to receive a notification for the new videos. Thank you, take care and have a great day.